Okay, um, welcome to class. This is an intermediate level um, English class. We will be discussing personal pronouns and um, this is a food and health class. So for our discussion topic, we'll be talking about um, red wine versus white wine as far as health, um, not just taste, but more how healthy it is for your body. I think popular opinion is that white wine is not as healthy as red wine, but this um, article discusses some of the health benefits of white wine as well. So um, as soon as some students join me, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine, you? I'm good. It's Christian? Yeah, it's Christian. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? Chile, South America. Where are you from? Chile, South America. Oh, Chile. Oh, very yeah. cool. So, how long have you been with Colingo? How? Excuse how me? long? How long have you been studying with Colingo? Uh, I don't know, maybe two days or three. I don't know. This week. Oh, oh very cool. Do you like no, I it? Knew, I knew one. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Hi, Garrett. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good. How's your week going? Um, not so bad, not so good. Yeah, Normal. Normal? Normal's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normal's not bad, and that's always good. And uh, how, and what about your low eating or fasting? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see, I, 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 I've, I never forget. <laughs> I need you should. I need you to be online every day to remind me, because <laughs> I forgot like five minutes later. It's like five minutes. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I do. I will say. It did make me more contra conscious of how long it takes me to finish a meal. I don't, I don't think I finish very quickly. Not like I used to. It does take me a while, so I don't eat as fast as I once did. But I forgot to be chewing slowly. I'm gonna okay. do it this week, Garrett. This week, I'm gonna do let's it. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> no faith. Come on. <laughs> and. Bruce? Hi, it's Stephanie. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Where are you from? 
or I'm from Vietnam. Vietnam. And did did you choose the name Bruce because you like uh, Bruce Lee? Yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Bruce Lee is pretty awesome. Yes, you can call me Bruce. I will call you Bruce. Very yes. cool. Yes. So, how how long have you been studying with Colingo? Oh, two weeks. Two weeks. Very cool. Yes. So nice. I love my new students. Yes. Awesome. And is it Sun Ming? Hello. All the way on the end, you've got a really pretty sunset as your picture. Hello. Uh oh, I don't think they can hear me. Okay, um, since we have new students in class, we're going to take a few minutes and just do introductions, and then we'll get into our grammar. So um, let's see. We're talking about food and health. And they were talking about wine, and not so much about the taste of wine, but more about the health benefits of wine. So, um, I guess we can tell us t tell us your name, uh, where you're from. You can tell us what you like to do for fun, and also if you prefer white wine or red wine, or if you drink wine at all. You might drink something else. So I will start. Um, I am, oh, my name is Stephanie. I'm from Ohio in the United States. For fun, mm, for fun, I actually really like to, I like to go for walks. That's my, my favorite thing to do. I love to read and I like to knit a lot. And I prefer white wine. I'm a white wine kind of person. So that's me. All right, Bruce, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Hung. I'm from Vietnam. And I I like go to the I like going to the gym. I like do karate. I like doing karate. I love making friends. Uh, and I like playing football and a lot of yes. Cool. Uh, when it comes to why I I think I prefer uh, why, why, why? Like white wine. Okay. Yes. You know, I've uh, I've just uh, drink a lot. Uh, I drank a lot to yesterday. <laughs> you drank white wine yesterday. <laughs> so right now, I'm kind of cloudy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. We always appreciate honesty in class. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, Christian. Yeah, well, my name is Christian. I am come from Chile, the south of Chile, uh, in the Patagonia. Um, and for fun, I am. A, I believe I am a sportman. <laughs> I like bikes. I like cycles. Ooh. And I ride with my friends uh, all the weekends. Um, related to wines, I am. From Chile, and in Chile we produce very good wines, <laughs> and I like uh, red wine. Uh, my prefer is the Pinot, and that's all. <laughs> very cool. Um, is that picture? Is that where you live? Yeah, is the this picture is uh, from take it from my home. That is uh, beautiful. Look, look, look into the the Andes mountain. Very beautiful. There are no mountains where I live. At all, I live in the middle of America, which is flat, 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 just farms <laughs> and barns. So very pretty. Okay. Okay, Garrett, go ahead. Well, first of all, I would say I would prefer red wine, but all drinks should be non-alcoholic, not alcoholic, without alcohol. I don't know if you can get red wine without the alcohol. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? Sorry. Can you can you get red wine without the alcohol? Because then it would just be grape juice. Yeah. So you prefer, like, just grape juice? Or no. In, in our country, it's available without alcohol also. 
Oh, they make it without alcohol. Yeah. Oh, cool. And and um and you see, uh, red wine is uh, more healthier than white wine because it helps for your health, uh, heart health, mm -hmm. and um, it is helpful for your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And um, it keeps you uh, calm, if you, especially if you are in depression. Mm, yeah. So it is most, uh, it is more beneficial than white wine. White wine is also uh, health healthy. It's uh, ha it ha it's helpful for l your lungs, but uh, if you see the benefits, so red wine is more healthier than white. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sorry? Can you introduce yourself to the rest of the class? Hi all of you, I'm Gerrit and I'm from Pakistan and my native uh, language is Urdu. Urdu. Yeah. Very Have good. You I used Have to be able to write like uh, just a little bit in Urdu because I had a really, really good friend from Pakistan growing up and she taught me a little bit and I don't remember uh, any of it now, but I used to be able to write like just some greetings and she she taught me how to write her name. I don't remember how to do much of it, but it was um, really pretty. Yeah. So what would you like to know? Everything. <laughs> How do I say uh, yeah, hello, like it's we, nice to meet you? Well, like we say hi, how are you? In Urdu, we say um, uh, like if you are a girl, so we will say kaisi ho and if you are a boy, so we will say how are you? Kaise ho? It, that means how are you? Or kya hal hai? Yeah, kaise ho and kya hal hai aapke? I'm going to need you to start a Kalinga. <laughs> I need more instruction. <laughs> it takes me a while to learn. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Thank you, Garrett. You're welcome. All right. And last but not least, Sunmin. Can you hear me? Oh, Mike has a problem. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's stinky. Okay. I think it, it if I, if some Ming can refresh page, so it might be better. You can try that. Um, refresh your page. We'll still be here. Um, and if your microphone starts working throughout the class, just just yell out. Even if I'm talking, just holler out, <laughs> and we, that way we can get to know you too. Okay. So now that we all know each other. We are going to be talking about um, personal pronouns. So this is an intermediate level class, so we are going to spend mm, about 15 minutes on this, if it takes that long. And then we'll move into our discussion. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, it disappears on me. Okay, can you guys see that pretty well? Yes. Okay. Oh. Where did the rest of it go? <laughs> Sometimes my the lesson plan, you see where this that line is? Part of it will be behind that line and I can't get it to come back. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna skip that part. Okay, so first what do you guys know about personal pronouns before we get started? Uh, you ask me? Anybody. Oh. If you know, go ahead. Oh. 
I think are as a fraternal, 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 uh, other things kind of uh, he, she, they, yes, I, it, yes, you, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Those are all personal pronouns. Okay, so basically, personal pronouns replace a a name or a proper noun in a sentence. So whenever it's if it's the subject of the sentence or the object of the sentence. So <clears throat> it is, if it is being used at this, as the object or the subject of the sentence, um, the subject is the noun performing the action, it replaces the noun, and usually goes in front of the sentence. So he likes dogs. So that could be Bruce likes dogs or he likes dogs. They ate cookies or they ate the cookies. That could be the, you know, I could say Garrett and Christian ate the cookies or I can say they ate the cookies. So in English, we don't, if we have a, a proper noun, such as a name, we don't usually repeat it throughout the sentence. We will say it once so that we all know what we're talking about. And then we'll replace it with a pronoun, a personal pronoun. For example, if I were talking to Garrett and or talking about Garrett and I said, you know, Garrett prefers non-alcoholic wine, Garrett likes red wine, Garrett thinks that red wine is healthier, it would be really weird if I just kept repeating her name. In English, we'll say it once so that we all are familiar with who the subject is, and then we will drop it for a personal pronoun. And that's why it's important to use them. Okay. Um, the object receives the verb's action. It replaces the noun and usually comes right after the verb. So Jack fed him and Jenny ate it. So you can use personal pronouns as both the subject and the object. You could replace both the subject and the object. He fed him as long as you've already told us who he is and who him is. Jenny ate it. She ate it. They're, it's both okay. So let's note some verbs can have two objects. Dan gave the dog to Tim. Dan gave it to him. You okay. could even say he gave it to him. Yes? Uh, we can see your screen. I don't know if you're sharing something. You can't see it now? No, I can see it. I only see your picture. Oh, what happened? This no, computer. I can see. You can I see can... it? Yeah. Oh. No. It's Google. I'm telling you, Google does not like me. It's always rebelling against me. No, 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 I can see. Sorry. Okay, you can see. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about which personal pronouns we should use. Um, I'll start with you, Bruce. Can you read these? The section right here, the gender. Yes. Uh, the gender male. He has cats. Female. She needs five dollars. Neuter. Jenny Eddie. Okay. Thank you. So, he for guys, she for girls, and it for neutral. Something that doesn't have a gender. This is something that I, it's not, not super difficult, but I feel like it's easy to forget because when you're not, when you're not thinking about it, it's easy to use she when you mean he and he when you mean she, but it ha you need to get this one correct in English because it does change the meaning of the sentence. If you say he, although you mean she, and I know you're talking about a girl, it's going to be confusing to me because I'm going to wonder if you're talking about someone new or if you just made an error. So I want you guys to make sure you're focusing on using the proper um, gender when you're using pronouns. Oh, excuse me. OK. Any, <laughs> yeah. Any questions so far? No. Pretty easy? Yeah. OK, Christian, can you read the next part? Yeah. Um, first person, I hate the brownies. Second person, you are late. Third person, they never came. Awesome. 
Okay. I, I must have say that I don't eat brownies. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, this is I ate the brownies. So that means you you would have to like them. So instead of hate, it's ate. I ate the brownies. Yeah. Okay. Last night I I ate the brownies. Last night you ate the brownies. <laughs> yeah. I wish I ate the brownies last night. I don't have any brownies. And you can make your set by yourself. I usually do. Actually, in the winter, because in America, it is super cold in the winter. Yeah. I love to bake. Okay, this is off topic, but I was baking for the people I work with. I have a, another job. And I one day, I baked, let me see, I baked ice sugar cookies. I baked chocolate chip cookies, oatmeal raisin yeah. cookies, peanut butter cookies, I baked homemade brownies, cinnamon rolls, I made red velvet cupcakes with cream cheese frosting, and I made double chocolate cupcakes with chunks in them wow. in one day. I mean, I'm talking hundreds of cookies and brownies, and I took it all to work. They were very happy. Oh, and I made peach cobbler, deep dish wow. peach cobbler, which is really good. They were very happy. Oh, why not? <laughs> there was flour all over my kitchen because <laughs> I was baking all day. It was so much fun, though. Yeah. I like to bake. Okay. See, I can't talk about brownies. It makes me hungry. All right, so I ate the brownies. <laughs> you are late. They never came. So this is first person, second person, or third person. Do you guys have any questions about this? No. No? Pretty simple? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to read this part because it's really small. If it is singular or plural, singular, Dan gave it to her, plural, we will arrive tomorrow. Um, your plural are all them. We, you can also be plural, you as a group, and we, us, such and such. Okay. Garrett's, can you read that yeah. section? Just sentences or with the heading? Whole, the whole thing. Okay. okay. Second, we also have reflexive pronouns, which are used when the subject and object are the same. Unlike, the pro unlike other pronouns, you must use reflexive pronouns so that you do not repeat the noun. Jane sent herself an email, not Jane sent. Jane and email, not Jane sent her an email. Second, J Jack learned English by himself, not Jack learned English by Jack. Jack and not Jack learned English by him. Thank you, perfect. Okay, so now we're talking about reflexive pronouns. Okay, you have to use them. You cannot skip this because if you were to tell me that Jane sent Jane an email, I would assume you meant two different Janes, that Jane sent some other Jane an email because we never, ever say that in English. You would never talk about yourself um, using your name in a sentence. Or Jane sent her an email. Now I just think she's sending it to some other woman. So if you're talking about an action that you perform, when you're performing to yourself, when you are the subject and the object, then you have to use a reflexive pronoun. I have two questions. Please. First is, um, herself and himself, are they called reflexive pronouns? Yes. And in the second sentence, Jack learned English by himself, like, so in the first sentence, Jen, Jane sent herself an email. So can I say Jane sent an email herself? No, because um, Jane sent herself an email. The reason herself is right after the verb is because it's a, she's directly being affected by the action, where in the second sentence, Jack learned English, and then by himself is extra information. You could remove by himself. English is also an object in that sentence. Jack learned English, so that's the direct object that's being performed. And then you add the information by himself. 
You could say Jane sent herself an email by herself. I can repeat again, please, first Jane sent. Okay, so the first sentence, Jane sent herself the, an yeah. email. Herself mm -hmm. is the object. So herself is the noun that has the action performed on it. Whereas in Jack learned English, English is the object and himself is the object. So that sentence has two objects. So My, Jack learned English. Uh, Jane sent herself an email means Jane, Jane sent the email to her. Like meaning is yes. she, did it, she didn't send to uh, any other person. She, she sent her to herself. Yes, and if you wanted to say it that way, you could. You could say Jane sent an email to herself. Yeah. Okay. That's fine uh, too. Yeah, I understand. Oh, sorry. Um, so either way, it just depends on how you phrase it. But if you're using yeah. by herself, then it would it wouldn't work in the first sentence. But you um, could say can, to herself. Can we make changes in uh, second sentence? Like J Jack learned English by himself, so himself could be come in between also. Um, no. no. When you say you do something by yourself, by myself, by himself, that always goes at the end of the sentence. If we remove by. Like herself? Well, we can say that we do something, um, we send something to ourselves, but we do something by ourselves, and that always comes at the end. So I ate lunch by myself. I walked to the store by myself. They're leaving by themselves. That always goes at the end of the sentence. So you, that would be wrong if I say Jack learned himself English. That would be totally wrong. That would be totally wrong. Okay. Oh, I turn my phone on silent. Okay. So I know it, it can be a little bit confusing with reflexive pronouns. It depends on the preposition that's in front of them. So when you have the phrase by and then a reflexive pronoun, that always has to go at the end. That's at the end of the sentence. Whereas if you have um, just a reflexive pronoun, it's more flexible. It can go after the verb. If you add a preposition, you can put it at the end, such as Jane sent an email to herself, or Jane writes emails by herself. You could put it at the end. But when it's when it's this particular phrase, by and then a reflexive pronoun, that always comes at the end because first you need to tell us what the action is that they are doing alone. So the subject does this action alone. Okay. Any other questions? No. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to call a little cold. All right. So this is just, I'm going to make this a little smaller, see if I can get it all on one page. Okay. So these are our pronouns. And let's see. Okay, he's gone. Okay, so we have singular. Our, so our singular pronouns in the first person is I, me, or myself. Okay, so if it's the subject, it's I. If it's the object, it's me. And if it's reflexive, myself. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to start with you, Bruce. Can you give me a sentence? using the first person singular pronoun. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'm learning. Oh, no. It's easy. Uh, I'm singing. Oh, no. I'm riding my motorcycle by myself. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. And Notice that I is both male and female. You don't have to worry. Because you're the one speaking, people will be able to tell if it's a guy or a girl. <laughs> so, um, second person. Again, this is male or female. And in English, the reason we don't have certain words if it's a guy or girl, whether it's first or second person, is because we don't like to state things that we can imply or that we can infer. 
So what that means is if we can figure it out, we're not going to say it. Now, if you're talking about he or she or somebody who's not present or not right there, then you need to be you need to clarify because we don't we can't see the person. But if I can look at you and I know you're a guy, then you don't have to say anything to let me know you're a guy. And if you know I'm a girl, then you don't I don't need to say anything to let you know that I'm a girl. So we don't need special words. And English is very much like that. We don't like to say things that are either very obvious or that we can figure out through conversation. Okay, Christian, can you do the second person? And try to either use the reflexive or use yourself as an object. Okay. <clears throat> uh, maybe it could be something like, uh, you are learning English by yourself? Very good. That's perfect. Okay. Okay. And third person. Third person, we have, it changes. So for if it's a guy, it's he as a subject, him as the object, himself as reflexive. Then female, she, her, herself, neutral, it, it, itself. Okay. So, Garrett, you can pick any of those three, male, female, or neuter. So, pick one and give me a, a nice sentence. Oh, she's gone. See, I can never see when my screen is, like, all the way um, expanded. I can't see when people disappear out of class. Okay. Oh. So, I will not ask Garrett. <laughs> so, Bruce, can you give me a sentence? Okay. Uh, she's, she's looking at him. And... Mm. That's very good. Oh. You used two of them. <laughs> you used the second person subject to use the... The male object, very good. Okay. So now we have our plurals. We, us, ourselves. This is for first person plural. So that's you and other people. So we're going to treat ourselves to a movie. Don't tell us what to do. Um, for a second person plural, now you're talking to you as a large group of people. Or you as in the two of you, more than one. Um, you've got you, you, and yourselves. And then third person, they, them, and themselves. Okay. Any questions about personal pronouns? No. No? Pretty easy? Sorry, Stephanie. Excuse me by five minutes, please. Okay, no problem. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get into the article. <clears throat> White wine versus red wine. Okay. And Bruce, you said you were a white wine drinker, right? Uh, I drink white wine. White wine. You're in Vietnam, right? Yes, exactly. So it is, hold on, don't tell me. Let's see, it's 10.40 a.m. here, which means that it's 11.40 p.m. in Taiwan which means that it is 10.40 p.m. in Vietnam. Yes? Yeah, it's nice. All right. Are you, are you in Thailand? I was in, I just got home from Taiwan a couple of weeks ago. I'll be going back in February. I'll be moving oh. there. Yeah. So that's the only way I can figure out what time zones people are on. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's 10.40 p.m. You said you're feeling cloudy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> How long have you been there? Um, I was only, I lived there three years ago, and I taught English, and then I just went back for a month to find a place, and then I'll be moving there in about six weeks, permanently. Oh, I got it. Okay, um, so we're going to talk about um, health benefits of your kind of wine, white wine. So can you read the first paragraph? That's okay. 
most white drinkers have their brief preference of red wise or white wise and their preferences are mostly based on taste. However, if you want to have a healthy meal, you should take the nutritional values of the wise into consideration. So, should you go for white or red wise? Why or red wise? Very good. Okay, so we're going to read through the article and then we'll come back and we'll talk about any unfamiliar vocab. Um, uh, we'll read the next paragraph on that way. Or the next section. <clears throat> it says features of white and red wines. The main ingredient in white wines is white grapes. That should be R. But, anyways. And these grapes have no skins or seeds. Most white wines have a light and fruity taste, but there are certain varieties of white wines that have a richer taste. Some types of white, of white wines that are available include Champagne, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Chardonnay, Vonier, and I'm going to guess Chen, Chenin Blanc. I don't know that word. It looks mm -hmm. French. And I cannot speak French to save my life. <laughs> it says, on the other hand, red wines are made with dark red and black grapes. The main difference between red and white wines is that red wines are produced with the whole grapes, including the skin. The skins add color and flavor to the red wines, and this is the reason why these wines have a richer flavor. Red wines are the preferred type of wines in major wine-making countries such as Italy and France. The most popular red wines include Zinfandel, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Pinot Noir, uh, Syrah, Malbec, and Savonese. Okay. Okay, I think he's one. <coughs> Can you read the next paragraph, Bruce? That's okay. Health benefits of white and red wines. Both white and red wines are good for the health. Although they are made with grapes, they do not prove the same health benefits as fruits. After they go through fermentation, the grapes lose, lose some, of, some of their original nutrition, but they also gain new health benefits. One of the main benefits of white wines is that they can improve heart health and prevent heart disease. They are also effective in promoting lung health. Red wines have most of their health benefits of white wines, and they can contribute to their health in other ways as well. Since they contain the skins of grapes, red wines have, have a powerful type of antioxidants Antioxidants called reverachal. Reverachals offer excellent protection for the blood vessel, and they can eliminate blood clots as well. They are also effective in inhibiting inhibiting the activities of enzymes that stimulate the growth growth of cancer cells and slow down immune response. Red wines also contain polyphenols, which are excellent antioxidants that can perform a wide variety of tasks, including reducing blood pressure and cholesterol levels, improving the immune, immune system, combating, combating against harmful bacteria, and preventing cancer, that there is also a significant amount of flavonoids in red wines, and these antioxidants are are known to be able to lower risks of cancer. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Conclusion. <clears throat> Generally, red wines are considered a healthier option than white wines. However, 
High quality white wines from certain winemakers may offer more health benefits than some red wines. Wines do not only improve physical health, but they can also help you overcome stress. If you are suffering from a serious disease, the calming effect of wines may give you the mental focus to help you overcome the illness. Even though wines are beneficial to your health, they should not be consumed excessively. Okay, so let's go over any unfamiliar vocabulary. Uh, does Y and Y uh, pronounce the same way? Um, can't you type both words in for me? White. White, white and, and wine. White and wine. Okay, so white is a, the final sound is a T. White t -t -t -t, is up there. T -t -t -t. Yes. And and wine, it, the the final sound is an N. Wine. So t -t -n, so the N when you make the T, you're pushing air past your tongue. So your tongue is on the top of your mouth, right? T, 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 t. and you're pushing uh -huh. air out. When you make the N sound, your tongue doesn't move. N, n. You hold your tongue in place. N. Yes, I got it. Uh, when you speak, when you speak them separately, you can recognize what what's the different. But when yeah. you uh, put in in the context, you uh, say. Why, why, and why you don't release the T sound? Is right? Um, you do still say the T sound. It's just softer. So we say white one. White, white. Yeah. So you just say it really quickly, and you say it, you don't you don't over um, pronounce it. So you don't say white wine, but you yeah. still say white wine. So it's your tongue still goes up. You still touch the top. You make a really soft tea, and then you keep going. White yes. wine. White wine. Yeah. White white wine. Yeah, really good. And that's actually pretty um, much the rule in English when we talk about linking sounds. Um, you pretty much link the final sound of one word to the initial sound of the next word. So there's a class about that, but it's really helpful because when we pronounce our words, unless we're pronouncing each one by itself, we have to link. They all flow into the next word so that we get a rhythm in our language. So um, if you're curious about that, I would suggest we do have a colingual class about that. I would suggest checking it out Yes. Okay. about linking final sounds. It's really helpful. Yes. OK. Oh, we are going to run out of time. Oh, no. So let me go into our, my discussion questions. And I can actually turn this off now. I think. Okay. Um, so, some discussion questions. What are some of the health benefits of white wine? What did we learn about in the article? Uh, can you uh, post the link? Oh, yes. I always forget to do that. Every time I forget. Yes, I can review. Here you go. Oh, um, before, before uh, answering the question, I am wondering, uh, why why in my country is only made of rice? Um, well, I think people tend to use what's most available to them. And no. I think rice wine is just more popular in Asian countries because I know you can get red wine, you can get grape wine in Taiwan, but rice wine is more popular. Yes. Rice wine is good. Good one. Mm. Uh, one th uh, according to the article, one of the main benefits of YY is they can improve 
heart health and prevent heart disease. Yes, very good. Um, they are also effective in promoting promoting lung health. Yes, excellent. So, what is the main difference and how red wine is made? So, between red wine and white wine, how are they made uh, differently? Our first, our uh, the different about uh, about uh, the different in uh, appearance. Uh, red wine uh, have the red have red color mm -hmm. because it contain uh, the screen the skins of grapes. Yeah. Uh, 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 when it comes to quality, uh, red red wines uh, have have a good have uh, much more um, benefit uh, benefits than the white wine. Um, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, because our uh, uh, red wines contain polyphenols. Uh, uh, or some, I think some enzymes. Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, red wine can uh, more. Uh, red wines are much more beneficial for the health than red wine, for example. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, they. Um, they can uh, s stimulate the growth of cancer cells, and they can slow down immune response. Mm. Uh, they can uh, red wines can reduce blood pressure and reduce cholesterol blood pressure. levels. Yeah, Press pressure is it right. Yeah, um, the word reduce. Reduce, reduce yeah, so blood, blood it pressure. It ends in like an S sound. Reduce. Reduce. Oh, I get it. Yeah. <clears throat> they can reduce breath, blood pressure and cholesterol <laughs> levels, and they can improve uh, the the immune system. Yeah. Uh, combat combat uh, against harmful bacteria and prevent cancer. Uh, in uh, all in all benefits, I think are uh, 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 stimulating the growth of cancer cells is is most important benefit. Yeah, it's that's a very important benefit. Um, let's yeah. see if so Ming, can you hear me now? Is your mic working? I think I think Mike's still not working. Oh, we are just looking the sunset. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> sunset. Yes, Sorry so, is from Hong Kong. Okay, so one I want to look at this sentence because you said it was the most important um, benefit, and I want to help you. Oh, your mic's still not working. I'm very sorry. I wish. I wish I could talk to you. If you have, if you want to participate, we only have like five minutes left. But if you type something into the chat box, I will read it. I will, I will be your voice. <laughs> I will read it out loud. Okay. Um, so Bruce, it says they are also effective in inhibiting the activities of enzymes that stimulate the growth of cancer cells. So let's break down that sentence. Um, yes. Inhibiting. Do you are you familiar with that word? Uh, in in Inhibit. Inhibit. Inhibiting. Oh, can you give me your context? Sure. Um, it's right here in the sentence. It inhibits the activities of enzymes. So to inhibit something means to prevent it from working or to stop it. Ah, I get it. Prevent something from working. Yeah. Like from being stop or prevent. Affecting. Effectiveness. Activity evidence. Stimulate. Oh, again. Uh, I'm. Uh, I was just uh, thinking that st 
to stimulate means to inhabit. <laughs> so I say the right a uh, wrong thing. Oh no problem. These are all. Um, whenever we talk about health, we're gonna hit some words that we don't even use that often. I mean, we use them, but only in specific speech. So it's important to bulk up your vocabulary. So they are effective, or they are very good at inhibiting or stopping the activities of enzymes. Enzymes are. I'm pretty sure they're. They're protein. Yes. No, I think a part of protein. I'm not sure. I'm not great with science, but a part, the part of your body that stimulate the growth of cancer cells. So it's the enzymes that are causing the cancer cells to grow, and the wine is effective in stopping the activities of those enzymes. So yeah. it, it causes the, what makes the cancer cells grow, it causes that to stop. And it can slow down immune immune response. So these enzymes, these bad enzymes, can stimulate cancer cells and slow down your immune response or slow down your body's ability to heal itself. And so wine is effective in inhibiting or preventing the effectiveness of those enzymes. So what what does the word stimulate mean? To, stimu to stimulate means to, it's basically the opposite of inhibit. So if you stimulate something, it means that you cause it to work. So, or you you give energy to it. You give power to it. Oh yes, I get it. The uh, opposite meaning are uh, of inhibiting. Inhibit. It, Hit, hit, inhibit. Inhibit. Yeah, inhibiting. Yes. Very good. All right. I remember the word inhabit. Yeah, to inhabit means to live somewhere. Inhabit. Uh, yeah. In, inhabit. I'm not sure. So, yeah, if I in, if I inhabit a place, that means I live there. Ah, uh, I got it. Yeah. So it's similar to. It the sound of inhibit, but the meanings are very different. Yes. So make sure you're hitting the it, it, inhibit. Inhibit. Yes, perfect. All right. Um, we are actually all out of time for this class. I have another class starting right now <laughs> that yeah. I should be in. Um, let's see trip. what am I teaching. Road trip, that's right. So you know what I love that. <laughs> we'll talk about fun things about road trips. So if you're there, I look forward to seeing you. and. Assuming, I really hope you get your microphone working. I hope I get a chance to talk to you. And thank you for coming to class, and I will see you guys later, okay? Yes, yeah, okay. Thank you. Right. Goodbye. Yeah, okay. See you later.